my name is Dr. Harry Witchell. My name is Ethel Harcliffe. I'm 79 years old and I have heart failure, irreversible damage to my heart. And I am a physiologist, and I am also the discipline leader in physiology at Brighton and Sussex Medical School. And this video is called The Pathophysiology of Heart Failure, How a Compensation Causes Congestion. The outline of this discussion of the pathophysiology of heart failure is, first, low cardiac output, second, compensation, third, fluid retention, fourth, congestion, and finally, how that leads to pulmonary edema. So, this will explain why I have trouble breathing. I want to know why my breathing problems are really a heart problem and not a lung problem. Okay, we will explain why a damaged heart causes problems in the lungs because of fluid retention. Also, at the end of this video, there will be a quiz. But let's start from the beginning. When doctors say that a patient has heart failure, they are invariably referring to chronic low output heart failure. So, you are saying there is more than one type of heart failure? Yes. Heart failure is a physiological and functional description, not a specific injury that you can pinpoint. A simple definition is any situation where the heart is not pumping sufficient oxygen to the tissues. According to this definition, there are many other types of heart failure. The most central type of heart failure is caused by a large myocardial infarct that damages much of the myocardium. Another cause of heart failure is when the heart's valves prevent the blood from leaving. An example is aortic valve stenosis. Both aortic stenosis and myocardial damage can lead to chronic low output heart failure. This is the best known kind of heart failure. There is also high output heart failure, such as in thyrotoxicosis, where the heart's output is normal, but the tissues still fail to get enough oxygen. What is low output? Low output refers to low cardiac output. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pump per minute. Why is my heart not pumping out enough blood? Low output heart failure is usually caused by damage to the heart or valves, for example, by a massive myocardial infarct. Damage to the myocardium decreases stroke volume. Stroke volume is the amount of blood in milliliters pumped out of the heart in one single heartbeat. When your heart is damaged, the strength of pumping or contractility is reduced. The weakening of your heart decreases your stroke volume and this means that the tissues of your body are not perfused with enough oxygenated blood. So, if a patient has extensive damage to the heart muscle, that means that they will always have low cardiac output, and thus low output heart failure, which will lead invariably to insufficient oxygen going to the rest of the body. So, you are saying that what my heart pumps out is called cardiac output. And when this cardiac output is low, it means that there isn't enough blood being pumped out by my heart. And if there isn't enough blood being pumped out, the rest of my body would be starved of oxygen. So what can I do to increase my cardiac output? Cardiac output is calculated as heart rate multiplied by stroke volume. The reason this equation is important is because if stroke volume is decreased, the cardiac output drops, which is bad. However, the cardiac output can be maintained at the correct level by increasing the heart rate. This is called compensation. Compensation sounds important. Compensation is how the body responds to injury or weakness. When one thing becomes weaker, something else becomes larger or stronger to compensate and maintain homeostasis. In most forms of low output heart failure, the damage causes reduced stroke volume. So if stroke volume becomes smaller, which would make cardiac output smaller, this is an example where the increase in heart rate can compensate and thus increase cardiac output back to normal again. How and why does low output increase how fast my heart is beating? To do this, the sympathetic nervous system increases its activity. The increased heart rate helps to maintain cardiac output. The sympathetic activity also helps to constrict systemic blood vessels, which helps to maintain arterial pressure. So wait... Are you saying I have low blood pressure? I don't remember you saying I had low blood pressure. This is the bit that is sometimes confusing about chronic heart failure. Blood pressure is determined by two parameters, cardiac output, which is controlled by the heart, and total peripheral resistance, which is controlled by how much your blood vessels constrict. The constriction of blood vessels is usually the way that the body controls its blood pressure. 
Normally, high peripheral resistance can compensate for low cardiac output. It sounds like my blood vessels compensate for heart failure by increasing resistance. So if my heart is weak, do I have low blood pressure or high blood pressure? High blood pressure, also called hypertension, arises because your arterioles constrict too much, usually for unknown reasons. The constriction of blood vessels raises total peripheral resistance. This high peripheral resistance makes it very difficult for the heart to pump blood out. High blood pressure creates resistance that adds to the workload the heart must perform. This makes the heart struggle. In the long term, the additional workload damages the heart and can cause heart failure. Thus, hypertension is one of the common causes of heart failure. So you're saying having low cardiac output might not cause low blood pressure? Under other circumstances, low output heart failure would tend to lower blood pressure. However, when the constriction of many blood vessels causes high peripheral resistance, this can simultaneously cause both high blood pressure and ultimately heart failure. Thus, although your heart is damaged, you do not necessarily have low blood pressure. In fact, the main goal of compensation during low output heart failure is for the body to prevent arterial blood pressure from dropping. So, you are saying that my heart compensates so I do not have low blood pressure? Yes, usually that is correct. Chronic low output heart failure due to hypertension actually is associated with high blood pressure. The two other goals of compensation are to maintain cardiac output and oxygen diffusion across the lungs. A large decrease in any of these leads to low oxygen in the brain, which would lead to loss of consciousness and could ultimately be followed by death. I don't want any of those to happen. Exactly. The kidney prevents these problems by implementing compensation. The kidney? How does the kidney compensate? The kidney responds to chronic low output heart failure by causing fluid retention. Fluid retention is the most central example of compensation. This is the reason that fluid retention is the key feature that connects all the different kinds of heart failure. Fluid retention? You mean the way my ankles are swollen? How does fluid retention compensate for my heart's weakness? When the kidneys retain fluid in the blood, it leads to changes in the heart caused by Starling's Law. Starling's Law normally causes the heart to compensate by increasing cardiac output. This Starling's Law sounds like it's good. If it increases the output of the heart, then it must mean that my heart would be pumping out more blood and oxygen. Not always. In a damaged heart, Starling's Law may be dysfunctional, so that the kidney's fluid retention during heart failure only partially helps to compensate for the heart's weakness. Meanwhile, the fluid retention has a range of destructive effects throughout the rest of the body. What kind of destructive effects does the fluid retention cause? Breathing difficulties, or dyspnea, occur when the fluid retention builds up in the lungs. That sounds bad. I thought you were trying to tell me that the compensation and fluid retention were good. Not when the heart is damaged. The way it works is that fluid retention increases central venous pressure, which increases venous return. What is venous return? And why does it help my heart pump more blood? Venous return is the amount of blood that returns from the veins into the right side of the heart each heartbeat. And venous return directly determines the amount of ventricular filling that occurs during diastole. In a healthy heart, Starling's Law means that this increased filling leads to increased stroke volume and thus to increased cardiac output. By contrast, when the left side of the heart is damaged, fluid retention leads to fluid in the lungs. When low output heart failure leads to fluid retention in the lungs, it is called congestive heart failure. So the congestion in congestive heart failure is the reason that I have trouble breathing. There is fluid retention in my lungs. What exactly is congestion? Congestion is when more of a fluid goes into a pathway than is able to leave. Congestion is a mixture of a clog that prevents fluid from flowing forward and the overflow that occurs behind the clog. I still can't imagine what is congestion. And why is fluid trying to leave? Is the fluid entering? Congestion is what happens when you build a dam. 
A dam will stop the flow downstream, while upstream there will be a flood. The flood behind the dam is like congestion. A dam? So you are saying that a dam causes the fluid retention? <laughs> I still don't understand what congestion is. Just like roadway congestion, where more cars enter a roadway than can leave, causing a traffic jam, in heart failure, congestion is usually caused by a blockage of blood vessels downstream. The result is that the upstream congestion area becomes pressurized and may overflow. So you are saying there is a blockage, and the effects of the blockage are different depending on whether you are upstream or downstream of the blockage, just like a dam or roadway congestion. What are the effects on my body? The effects of congestion depend on whether the heart failure is on the left side of the heart, the right side of the heart, or both sides of the heart. During left heart failure, the left ventricle is too weak to pump its contents into the aorta. So when the ventricles contract, the right ventricle pumps out blood until it is mostly empty. However, the damaged left heart is unable to pump effectively, so the left heart fails to empty sufficiently. That is interesting. I think I understand. If the left heart fails to empty, does that make it act like a blockage? Yes. The excess fluid in the left atrium acts like a blockage. The atrium, that is where the blood enters the heart. So excess fluid in the left atrium causes something like a blockage. Yes, the fluid in the left heart backs up to the lungs. This backup prevents blood from leaving the pulmonary circulation. Meanwhile, blood from the right heart continues to enter into the pulmonary circulation. So, you're saying that if the heart failure occurs only on the left side of the heart, the left side and the right side of the heart will not work together as a team. Instead, while the right side of the heart is pumping blood into the lungs, the left side of the heart is not allowing blood to leave the lungs. That must cause some serious problems inside the lungs. Yes, this leads to increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation which can cause the fluid to diffuse out of the lungs' capillaries and into the alveolar walls. This causes pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema? Does this mean I have extra water in my lungs? Is this why I have trouble breathing? Exactly. The congestion in the lungs means that the fluid accumulates at the surface of the alveoli. What does the extra fluid in my lungs do to my breathing? This fluid interferes with the oxygen diffusion from the air sacs of the lungs to the blood vessels. This congestion causes the breathing difficulties. Wow, this is complicated. I'm beginning to see how it all connects my heart problem to my kidney to my breathing problem. It sounds like this compensation and the fluid accumulation isn't helping me. It's making my breathing worse. Exactly. That is the problem with chronic low output heart failure. Over time, the compensation and fluid accumulation causes problems in the lungs, as well as further damaging the heart. And now, test your knowledge and take part in our quiz. We'll reveal the answers at the end. Good luck!